Welcome to Rhythm of Reviews, where we dive into the rest of Rhythm of War, the fourth Stormlight Archive novel. I am Danielle with the 17th Shard. Hi, I'm Avin. And I'm Eric. Hi. Hello. Hello. So today we're going to be going over Navani and Kaladin's little plot line during Rhythm of War. Riddle. Because... <laughs> just you know a little the main plot, plot line. the main plot um, of the book <laughs> right actually yes i agree i do think that rhythm of war is more of navani's book oh yeah Definitely. rather than venley or you know the oh, flashback sure. book um so basically in in their plot line very briefly navani uh, learns after part one learns that the sibling is the mystery span read writer starts communicating with them uh, once the singers infiltrate and take over the the pillar room um, during this time all of the knights radiant fall unconscious except for kaladin and lift and um, during this time kaladin and navani are working to protect some nodes around the tower to keep the sibling from being unmade by Raboniel and uh, Navani, poor thing, is forced to do science um, <laughs> while imprisoned by Raboniel. And together they make some amazing discoveries about rhythms and light. Yep. And uh, eventually Navani bonds the sibling and they save the day. Hooray. The uh, Rhythm of War spoilers, by the way. I mean, but yep. you, you probably you probably. I guess we should have said that before. We probably should have said that, but like it, it's y- yeah, it's um, kind of mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah, <laughs> rip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do we just want to go talk talk through through part two? Well, well, there's a lot to talk about, so we don't know how long this is going to be. But like, there's a lot of Calden and Navani overlap, so mm-hmm. we kind of got to group them. I mean, I mean, starting up, we we get Kaladin developing mental health. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. One one thing that that I saw that uh was on Tumblr, where someone was like, "Oh man, uh, Zeth, Zeth is and Kaladin are gonna go to Shinovar." Uh, I think the quote goes. Ah, Kaladin develops mental health. Zeth, you need that right now. Go, go, go do that. <laughs> I was just like, he does. Yep. yes. Yep. It's Fantastic. his turn. <laughs> yes, it very much is. And I, I really like that idea that, like, for one, Kaladin obviously is struggling with mental health issues himself and needs his own group therapy. Like, yes. He doesn't participate at first, but... Uh, he says that he will, um, but he wants, in true colored fashion, he wants to take care of others first. Uh, yeah, but I really like it because it goes to show, or like, it, so far he's been in the role of like a surgeon of the body and like a, a physician. And now he's also showing other facets of himself that he can like take, uh, that you have to take care of people's uh, mental health as well, unlike mm-hmm. the devotary of mercy is doing. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, it's very much the old timey yeah. way they dealt with mental illness because they didn't really understand. But Kaladin understands; he knows what's mm-hmm. up. Can I just mention the thirst for Kaladin in his surgeon outfit on <laughs> Tumblr? <laughs> it is incredible, and I thank Brandon every day for this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's I really do art. like him as a surgeon, though. Like, it fits him. It, it does, works yeah. well for him, yeah, I think. I'm sort of. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. he's obviously good at it. Uh, yeah, I-, I wouldn't say working with Liren was good at all, but yep. <laughs> uh, I don't think you should ever work with family, honestly. <laughs> well, that's true. That's, 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 Especially that's... when they have a very difficult relationship, like the one between Liren and Kaladin. I mean, I'm thrilled that we got more Lear and Calden stuff. I have been waiting for that for a long time, since book one, really. Like, just developing mm-hmm. that and seeing how that clash of philosophies went. That's this book, and that was great. We 
didn't get to see much of Adrian and Delena clashing this book, but we yeah. have some setup for that. Mm -hmm. But instead we get like finally um, Kaladin and Liren talking things out and really... Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't get much of it in so, Oathbringer, right? Yeah, so exactly. I'm I'm glad well, that's time. Yeah, it's a good change from seeing the the relationship between Kaladin and Dalinar. Um, <laughs> very big change and difference in <laughs> yeah. how the two of them approach their uh, the relationship as father and son. Yeah, then that Liren just needs to adopt Adolin. And then, uh, so <laughs> Liren can be a good dad to Adolin, and Dalinar can adopt Kaladin and be a good dad to Kaladin. Mm -hmm. Easy. And I mean, Adolin is on track to becoming an edge dancer, so a healer, so yeah. he'd fit very well with Liren. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. That, and we, just, we just need to do some child swapping. Yeah. Easy. But then, of course, after all the other stuff that in, was in part two that we talked about last time with Adolin and Shalon. Uh, we get the climax of part two, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, like I said, go I said in the first episode, I didn't expect the invasion <laughs> at the end of part two yeah. at all. Yeah, and it was just awesome to uh, yeah, and to see like the sibling just going, "I'm the sibling." Oh, this was now. that just I'm, not I'm, so great? Uh, oh man, yeah, because. Like, you can get the foreshadowing from uh, Eden Oathbringer. I, I wonder how that would impact people if they weren't looking super closely at Oathbringer. Because, like, to me, ah, oh, sibling, I'm like, yes, give me that. Like, they do yeah. definitely do foreshadow the sibling existing in this book, which is good. So it's not mm -hmm. just out of nowhere. But I thought that was awesome. And definitely. just <laughs> just that whole, like, the invasion was just awesome you know you gotta have kaladin and lift as main characters they they're immune of course uh to the yeah. falling falling asleep how else are we gonna have kaladin be john mcclain and your theory like come <laughs> on like that's, that's 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 what this book is i was a bit surprised at how little there was of lift though because it seemed in this part that it was important that she was still awake um and it ended up being important later on but she wasn't really around. Like, I don't know what she was doing, just well, stealing food until she got captured. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the thing is, is in the, right after part two, we get the lift interlude where Mraze captures mm -hmm. her. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah, we don't know what she's doing before. Like, we, we kind of see from her perspective what happened when things go mm -hmm. down, because that's like the second half of her interlude. So I, I don't think that's that incongruous. She was just taken out by Mraes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where he name drops Lifelight about her abilities. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think that's a bit later. <laughs> it's not in yeah. the interlude. That's when oh, really? uh, that's when Mraes dumps him. Lift yeah. to Raboniel. Oh, that's right, because he was asking about it. Yeah. Yep. I, I do really, I, I really love that climax of part two because it is mm -hmm. so cool. It it's kind of crazy to me how like easy it was to get into your theory, but like they clearly, I guess the aluminum protecting your theory in the tunnels, they they really gotta buff that up, really. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I but I what I really like about that entire sequence was the um, Teofil, yeah. the, the battalion yep. lord, like. Um, it was nice to see, for one, he's a Dark Eyes, and to see this shift, shift in the society again, that now Dark Eyes also can be battalion lords and not just the Light Eyes. Mm -hmm. And they're actually capable people, unlike yeah. some of the Light Eyes. Oh, and yeah, it was just true. really cool to sort of, for one, see Navani, of course, mm -hmm. um, never, uh, um, organize all the resistance that she or she at least tried to organize resistance, and they failed ultimately, but uh, it was an they got pretty like, close. Uh, when, yeah, when they got the lightning li uh, li uh, lightning rods, that was really yeah. cool. I felt to uh, get rid of the storm forms. Yeah, yeah, uh, it it is kind of funny going back to words of radiance. It's like, oh, storm forms are terrifying. It's like, oh, they're they're they're, uh, they're not that bad. Um, <laughs> they're just staticky. <laughs> yeah, we we find out uh, the Thalen method of transferring oh, yeah. stuff. Yep. Uh, here, mm -hmm. which was, I love Navani just bullying them 
to give up the secret. It's like, <laughs> look, guys, you're all going to die if you don't. And the one guy's like, what? You can't give that away? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so great. We get that. Uh, and then Raboniel uh, offers to Navani, which, uh, to do science. And I do love that scene because mm-hmm. Raboniel and Navani have just great uh, interplay and just mm-hmm. even straight up where Raboniel like gives her that deference of being a queen and then like later is like oh now you need to refer to me as my title thanks uh yeah. after that that was great i i really like how their friendship kind of started like navani was thinking about how she was being treated by gavilar and how mm-hmm. she's not adequate and everything and Raboniel's like uh no you're a genius you were oh. gonna work on this project for me <laughs> especially at the end where Navani's like, I'm not a scholar, and Raponio's like, y- you're a scholar. Mm-hmm. What What the hell? And that was just such a great moment, <laughs> given the prologue. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scavalar's a jerk. <laughs> a little bit. More than a little bit. <laughs> uh, more than a little bit, yeah. He, he's, he's a piece of garbage. Uh, yeah. do, do we want to talk about... Uh, the the moment at the end of part two with Liren and Calden, because that was that was a scene. That was, yeah, I, what did you guys think of Liren there? Where okay. where Liren kicks him out? Horrible, horrible choice of him. I mean, I understand where he's coming from. Like his his oath, you know, kind of. They don't have a Hippocratic oath, but yeah, he he really does not agree with Kaladin's uh, <laughs> need to fight people. He has his own set of ideals, and he very yes. much sticks to them. He's very honorable but in sticking to those oaths. He's, he's a father as well as a surgeon. So he, at this moment, he needed to be more of a father than a surgeon, I think. Yep. And he didn't. And I was quite annoyed at Lirin at the end of part one already, when he like just took away the decision from Kaladin to... Mm. Like that, he wants to become a surgeon. Right, true. And I was pretty furious with him at the end of part two here because, uh, like, when he is, oh, you come into my sanctuary and, uh, like, to, to dare to kill in my sanctuary, or whatever he says. And, like, that is not what your son re- needs right now. Like, his, mm-hmm. his, one of his, uh, his, one of his best friends is in peril right now. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, see, I love that like, scene. I mean, like, I, I, I get why Laren is hated. I, I get it. <laughs> but, like, it just makes so much sense for him to react that way. It does, yeah, but it doesn't make him any more, any more likely to That's be... That's true. Like, You're not wrong yeah. there, but it's <laughs> like, th- that was the whole thing. Kaladin shouldn't kill, and then, like, Liren witnesses Kaladin kill, and obviously he is not okay with that at all, right? But I mean, oh. what other option did he really have? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what that's, would that's Liren true. have done in this situation? He would have just kind of rolled over and been like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 true. Do we have any other part two thoughts? I mean, uh, I think it's nice that we have Debit show up here in part two, and mm-hmm. like, it's cool yeah. to find out that he was the uh, like liaison between the sibling or one of the liaisons between the sibling and um, Navani. So it was cool to have him have a purpose, I guess, because yeah. he sort of fell under the rug in the previous, like an Oathbringer, and uh, he has something to do now. And yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, that was great. And in, in giving him a task, or, or you know, a purpose actually helped him because um, he has this shell shock oh, kind wow. of, um, kind of, kind of a mental health as well. And Kaladin is working on helping people, and so it's nice to see how how he has this task from the sibling and also Navani, and he's kind of working with within that, and it's helping him. It helps him like mm-hmm. speak and and. Um, I don't know, interact with people a little a little easier. Yeah, for sure. And in general, like the one scene when they were in the bar and Relaine shows up, that I think that was a nice scene to have them talk to him mm-hmm. again about bridge the bridge crew and Kellen actually apologizing for what they've done to him. Like it Yeah. They try to 
include him and uh, treat him like a normal person, not mm -hmm. like a parchment, basically. So that's that's cool that they see that they were doing really well with him back then. Yeah. Oh, and I have to say, I did have a kind of like moment of whoa. I did not realize that Shen was short for parchment <laughs> or parshendi. Yeah. His his name Shen. I'd oh. never realized that until this book. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, that's just like calling a person person, and yeah. I was like, wait, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. I just really I thought that was nice because <laughs> I didn't put it together. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about something that Malishi was the sibling bond. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that was uh, not the assumption that we had coming out of Oathbringer because it was like. The, the this line that the Stormfather was wounded in the recreants. Yeah, yeah. no, Malishi was not the Stormfather Bondsmith. Malishi was the sibling Bondsmith. Uh, and the only Bondsmith of that era. And mm -hmm. that is a big deal. And man, I want to know more about that relationship because the oh, sibling yeah. and Malishi, oh my goodness. That is quite so how thing. like Malishi was responsible for putting up the protections. Yeah. And stuff around the mm -hmm. siblings, so they knew they had to protect, protect it, and put in that failsafe because, of course, that was brand new at that point. Like before that, they could have the sibling just protect itself, I guess, or they mm -hmm. didn't need to protect it with those failsafes. So yeah, it shows an incredible amount of foresight, I guess, on yeah, on part of Milishi that they mm -hmm. did that. He did that, yeah. Yeah, but then like the sibling is cursing. Malishi and I think the line was ah uh, how I often curse you but now I mm -hmm. oh I I forget how that line was but now I thank you yeah that was that was good <laughs> but it, like it makes sense but wow we we definitely made some assumptions after Oathbringer just like with uh, the oath gates being locked by honor mm -hmm. like, nope nope was not was not yep. locked by honor it was lo locked by the sibling. Still don't really know how the Recreant's timeline goes. Like, when oh. Malishi stopped being bonded with the sibling. It's, it's kind of a lot of stuff yeah. going on there. <laughs> oh, but It also, like, it is, like, I'm super excited to find out more about that and hopefully, maybe, book five a little on, maybe with spec half stuff at the Heralds, but because we know at least Nail and sure. um, Kalek were there, so... Yeah, with the Kalak um, ep uh, epigraphs also. I'm just really excited to find out more for one about Milishi and, of course, the recurrence mm -hmm. itself. I definitely think that uh, that will get the main thrust of what happened with the recreants and the the main details uh, by part five or by book yeah. five, not part five. Um, because th there's cl Brandon's clearly setting up that there are still mysteries in the recreants, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think he, uh, at least that's uh, what I've seen. I even talked about how like the front half is more about the Knights Raiden as a, as an right. order, and so that makes a ton of sense to yeah, yeah keep yeah, up the all recreants, the recreants yeah. in front five, and then we'll do more heraldy stuff in the back half. So yeah, we didn't have time for things like the recreants <laughs> in the back half. <laughs> That's old history. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So part three, uh, Kaladin, it, it's it's a diehard. Th this is diehard Kaladin. <laughs> that is, that yeah. is exactly what's happening. And uh, he is not having a good time of it, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, yeah, part three, I, I didn't really... I liked it. I obviously loved reading it, but I got, it got so frustrating with the Navani and the sibling. Oh yeah, um, Why is that? the sibling. Okay, I understand that the sibling was betrayed and doesn't trust humans and everything, but they're under attack. So the fact that they're so unwilling to help Navani with the nodes and everything. I mean, eventually we do find out that. They were being, you know, spied on and listened <laughs> into, but it just uh, felt a little draggy to me. Uh, 
I mean, I felt like there was a lot of Kaladin combat. The, there was maybe a mm-hmm. little too much of that, but mm-hmm. I, I felt I was not annoyed with the sibling, especially because the sibling was completely right that uh, as soon as yep. the sibling gave info to Navani, it's like, ah, immediate betrayal. Like, what the hell? But it makes sense that Spren... Spren do not exactly... They don't get over grudges easily. Even more so than it's humans. Long memory. They have a very long memory. They've existed a long time, and uh, I'm sure... The sibling is perfectly justified. And also, like, the sibling doesn't trust Navani due to what mm-hmm. she does to other spren. So I, mm-hmm. I think yeah. all that makes perfect sense for the sibling. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it makes perfect sense for the sibling for me because um, there's that one line where they talk about how uh, where, where Navani says, like, I don't know, it has been millennia or something like that. And um, the sibling just goes, eh, time it doesn't really matter to me. It's whatever. And, uh, the other sprint pretend that uh, like they it matters or like it's cl- uh, closer to you humans. But I am not like that. Uh, it yeah. For one, it really shows off that the sibling is not. It's it's not. Uh, like, is the tower it not? Yeah. Um, or it's a sprint and not a like uh, just a. I don't know how to put it. Like it's not. It is a person, I guess, but not really. Like it yeah. is more of it because it is the tower. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's really interesting to see that here. Yeah, and also yeah, the, it, it's it's interesting. The sibling uh, uses uh, they pronouns, or at least mm-hmm. everyone uses they in reference to the yeah. sibling. Uh, I really but, did appreciate that touch. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, the the sibling is the tower and doesn't doesn't really care about mortals mm-hmm. anymore. <laughs> yeah. But you know that that that's fun. I I I I love the the sibling Navani relationship. Like that mm-hmm. is that is a cool relationship. A lot of room for yeah. growth in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You know what just occurred to me if. Rabonia was spying on all the sibling communications. Why didn't they, like, no details on what Navani was saying to Kaladin? Well, did they? Like, like why I wouldn't don't they have... Know. Per- I don't know. I, they did. They, did they? Because they didn't know about the, um, like, the, oh, right, the uh, glove beat. Fabriel oh, yeah, thing, and they didn't well. know about any of that. Yeah, um, right? I, I think I could just pass it off as like maybe they were only listening in at certain times and they weren't listening a hundred percent of the time. Like maybe they, hmm. because they, the way it worked was seemed to be that Navani and Ken could talk directly to each other. Like they didn't need the sibling as an intermediate. Uh, oh, so maybe they could only it, hear like the sibling the, side of the conversation, yeah, but they like couldn't hear okay. Navani or Kaladin talking. Oh. Uh, like they, they knew what Navani was saying because they had her. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's true; it didn't get addressed at all. <laughs> but it, this hmm. is—it's it's just funny that it's like yeah. is there a plot hole? And this is like third time that I've been <laughs> going through the book. I'm like, is this a new plot hole? Did I just? What's going on here? I don't know. <laughs> if, if if comments, you have uh, some thoughts on that, I'd love to know. But, yeah. but I, I feel like this might be a plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. There, there's a lot of things Brandon can do to justify things. I guess they might have just... Because to keep up the appearances, appearances of not having spied on them, maybe they just didn't act on what they learned from Kaladin? Like about yeah. Kaladin? Yeah, because they didn't really... Uh, yeah, that that might be the simplest answer because they they didn't want to reveal that because as soon as they mm-hmm. like use that knowledge about Kaladin, then like that they immediately, you know, that the game's given up. Whereas yeah. uh, they obviously want the sibling to reveal the locations of the notes, right? So that that's probably the easiest thing. And after part three, then we don't see. The sibling does not exactly communicate with Navani, really. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's not really okay. There's not really an opportunity for uh, them to act on what Kaladin's doing because Kaladin's mm-hmm. unconscious. What I like, oh, not necessarily like, but uh, what was interesting to see in this cha- in this part was how um, Kaladin had this his like bad dreams or visions mm-hmm. um, yeah. that was sort of 
started after um, the Moash interlude, I guess. Yeah, like Moash is to... sending them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is like, it's weird how that works. I guess maybe, I don't know, Odium can send them through mm -hmm. Moash because Moash is connected still connected to, to Calvin. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it was not fun to see Kaladin suffer like that. And mm -hmm. uh, uh... yeah. I mean, it was a little fun. I, I, I like I like when main characters go yeah, suffer. It was fun in the sadistic way, but it yes. was not fun in the um, oh yeah, yeah. Kaladin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Kaladin, Kaladin didn't find it. Fun. Yeah. No, 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 no. What do you guys think of the the glove Fabriel thing? Okay, I loved it. Okay, I was really into this part. So Brandon does this really cool thing where he gives a character with a magic ability a handicap. And this handicap was that Kaladin was only able to use that one type of lashing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sticking things together, basically. Yep. And with the glove, it gives him this flight again but in a very restricted way. And I really liked how he had to do a lot of trial and error. And there was a little bit of foreshadowing in how he slammed into the wall and broke his fist and everything. Mm -hmm. um, really, really like nicely done. And I'm not a big fan of the big action scenes where it's like word for word, like he punches him in the face and then he punches him in the stomach and <laughs> all that. But using this special Fabriel, the glove Fabriel was really nice. And then when they went into the water in the well and he's going through and using it and it's much easier in the water, that's making me think that there's going to be some kind of water combat scene sometime later on. Oh yeah. I kind of forgot about that with <laughs> like I had a lot to write about on that one. <laughs> what why was it easier they... in the water? Because changing the directions of okay. his flight, his oh, flight sure, 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 sure. falling, yeah. um it was a lot easier in the water and it was a I don't know. He was able to um like swim through the water very quickly mm -hmm. sure. using that. And yeah, it didn't pull as much on his arm, I think I remember. Yeah, mm. yeah, I think that was something like that. Mm. But I, I agree that I really like, like, Brandon really shines at this, like, for one, putting in handicaps for people and then showing how the magic users deal with them. Mm -hmm. And also with just, I like how magic tech is going in, in <laughs> yeah. uh, all of the Cosmere. Because you can give that but to anyone, I, potentially. Yeah, exactly. But I don't, <laughs> I don't like that it's a glove. <laughs> like it's just Tomo or whatever he was called, like the the guy who came up with it. Yeah. Like, I guess I mean I guess it gave Navani something to <laughs> or to show off. Like, it, Navani is the one who's thinking in practical terms and mm -hmm. is required to direct her scientists and stuff like that. But did it have to be a, like it seems so impractical <laughs> it's like love what, I don't well, know. Yeah. what would be better well how will he fly like superman he puts it in his belt yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i mean it definitely so, tugs on the arm a lot for sure yeah yeah so i i liked all the fabulous stuff of course like how it works as well with uh like it use aluminium and uh how it was like magnets and stuff like that so that's cool to learn but i don't know <laughs> well i <laughs> you have just, to keep in mind it's a ridiculous. prototype so that as is. a prototype and navani is doing the right thing she's sending someone out onto the field with this prototype and g gathers data from kaladin about how it works this is this and is the so, time to do science i mean this is her science book so um so he goes out and he tries it out and then he gives suggestions um kind of works around how he can use it he puts it in his belt and um he also uses it as a weapon or a way to pin people and stuff so it's really really nice like this part is the part that i like i'm not a big kaladin fan like fangirl mm -hmm. of kaladin but i really liked this part because he's working with navani yeah i, I do like that kaladin got to work with navani a lot like oh yeah has yeah. he really done that like not really Okay. No. So, like this, it's it's nice. It, and they interplay off each other. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Speaking of Navani, what what do what do you guys think of Navani sciencing? I loved it. <laughs> she did so it right much. too. It was written right. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you know, doing hypotheses and different iterations, and only changing one part and having a control and everything. Like she did everything the right way. Yeah, I I loved it too. I just feel like Navani probably shouldn't. I mean, I guess this is more of a thing later after Draboniel reveals that she was being spied mm-hmm. on the whole time. But mm-hmm. Navani, why are you why are you just doing what Raboniel wants? Like, come on, come on. Don't, don't aren't, yeah, aren't you a little smarter than I, this? But I agree with that, but I feel like <laughs> I, it's totally understandable for me. It is understandable. I was just so caught in the moment and like she she was doing proper science for once and um found fulfillment in it so and she likes it she yeah. just yeah yeah she just had to continue so uh and, i totally understand that. she she also did take some time to make those traps and things that's true mm-hmm. that's true she so in between her sciencing she was also tinkering around with um ways to trap them or attack them or protect herself mm-hmm. i i loved like the sciencing with like merging the lights and oh, yeah. uh, and just the emulsifier and stuff. Oh, uh, that was that was really cool. Mm-hmm. The metal, yeah, yeah. The the like that's also a nice callback to like the semantic stuff from yes. the capsule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I I am yeah, very happy cool. that that that's like subtle foreshadowing that mm-hmm. fits things together. Yeah, and what I. <laughs> Uh, like uh, for, like just all the costume implications as well are just yeah fantastic <laughs> like, oh yeah yeah we get these pure tones of pro- presumably every shot has one and uh, sure. yeah and also what I really liked was the like how the spectra of the lights are affected by it that like um, uh, Stormlight has a slightly larger blue band and like Voidlight has this extremely or uh, much larger uh, violet band and so it was just like, uh, once again Navani just acts as a proxy for us readers finding mm-hmm. out about all That's the true. Like, yeah all these cool stuff uh, things I know there is there's some readers who like didn't enjoy like the Navani science thing but I mean I don't know I like learning about these things <laughs> Uh, I, I think I, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I think I was chatting with uh, Murphy Napier, and she was saying mm-hmm. she liked it, but she didn't need as much science as was in the book. And I'm like, and that that's fair, uh, because there's there's a lot of magic science going on here, and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, same with a lot of Kaladin combat. I didn't quite need so much. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I don't think I dislike it, but. I'm like, oh man, that was that was a lot of Calden fighting and mm-hmm. and him fighting the <laughs> pursuer and stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> I I, you, I could have cut out a node and probably been fine. Uh, and yep. for some people, maybe like ah, a little bit too much magical science. That'd be fair. Mm-hmm. But what it did serve really well was to develop for one Navani as a character, mm-hmm. like to explore her character, but also her relationship with Raboniel, of course, mm-hmm. because yeah. they talk to each other a lot and uh, they really work off each other very well. And um, they really have a relationship as, like, they see each other as equals almost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's still that, like, Nav- uh, Raboniel is the occupier in this. Uh, relationship but Mm -hmm. they're still seeing each other as equal and like bouncing ideas of each other and um like they have a notebook that they share here Mm -hmm. so yeah that's really cool what do you guys think of when you were first reading about the rhythm of war epigraphs like in part three i made a couple of notes about like my as i was reading um about what i thought things were like in chapter 71 the epigraph mentioned voice for lights so my mm. thought was oh this makes me think that the author of the in-text rhythm of war is a listener or singer oh that's, that's their name. <laughs> I mean. and, and i have like little things like that like every time it gives a new um term or a new little tidbit of information i made a guess on wh- who the author was going to be so 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I caught on pretty early on. Like, I think I, I can't remember which epigraph it was, but uh, pretty early on that it's two authors probably. And yeah, so yeah, I, and oh, I'm sure. pretty sure it was Navani and Rabonio. Okay. And at first I assumed just like, I don't know, Rabonio was like the main author, and then Navani was just providing undertext or something like that. But mm-hmm. then it became pretty apparent. Like, but I liked it in general, how it was structured and how especially towards the end when Navani just gets more and more frantic and like talks about all, uh, I don't know, what, what was the, the tones or whatever she talks about and how how much more feverish her um, thoughts get. And yeah, yeah I really like these epigraphs. So, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't quite, uh, the reason we didn't do a podcast solely on these epigraphs is it's like uh, half of it is kind of the mystery of who's, you know, Mm-hmm. who's yeah. the undertext, who's the main author, and, and things, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely discuss those epigraphs, <laughs> but probably just not in a dedicated epigraphs video. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we don't we, do 40-minute get... podcasts anymore, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. I mean, we get information on L, of course, so yeah. discussing, the, the, discussing that in isolation wouldn't really work. Like, also right. going through the rest of the learn of L, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Definitely good to foreshadow L, so he doesn't just like mm. pop in at the end of the book, being like, "Ooh, what is this yeah. guy?" Oh, <laughs> uh, I will say though, in part three, the the well scene was was pretty was pretty epic. Like, oh yeah, as much as I'm like, ah, eh, Calden fight, like you do really feel the emotions of Calden and just being beaten down so hard as the nodes fall, like his healing gets mm-hmm. worse and things. And oh man, that well scene is. Right, and there's just stressful. something about being underwater. It's so mm-hmm. oppressive and yeah. makes me like really anxious. Mm-hmm. So it, that had a lot of emotion in that chapter. I think that was chapter 70. Yeah. I definitely felt anxiety like the whole time in, in part three, mm-hmm. like whenever I'm at oh, a Calvin yeah. chapter. On a reread, like a, a little less <laughs> because it. it like you could say that it's a little repetitive, but uh, it's you. You really feel the stress of everything mm-hmm. and and the weight of everything. <laughs> yeah, the weight of it all. Yeah. The weight of the tower. Yeah. That's yeah. a chapter title. I was not quite sure. Uh, Kaladin goes out in the high storm, and Kaladin and Dalinar talk a little bit. And mm-hmm. next episode, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about Dalinar, Yasna, and other things. Mm-hmm. I I was never quite sure because we it kind of fades to black there after that conversation mm-hmm. and we don't really know how Calden gets out of that yes. situation and I'm just like wait what what happened there we like Calden when I, what when I went through the book yesterday again to like just go through some uh, skim over all the chapters I was like as soon as I got got into part four when Calden like has this nightmare and. Mm-hmm. Um, is in this fever dream, like, is like I wasn't sure anymore. Is he still outside, or did he get back yeah. inside? Now? Yeah, like, like how to get back inside? Like, yeah, like what happened there? Like, obviously, yeah. Tef didn't get him because Tef was still unconscious, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't was lived with them at that point already. No, I think that's part four because yeah, they so, hmm. because Venley frees. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Venley frees lift. And uh, then they go bring Lyft to Teft and Calvin, and that's mm-hmm. what wakes them up. Yeah. So, I, we'll, we'll pro- I think we'll do a, a dedicated Venley episode where we get to talk about the flashbacks and Relaine and, and things. Although we should probably talk about Relaine and the sibling. But yep, um, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that that's basically uh, part three. Were, were there any other... Mm-hmm. Part three stuff. There's what I noticed on my skimming through the chapters yesterday. There was some slight foreshadowing for um, the part four epigraphs, I guess, and like how uh, the binding of Bauda Mishram caused the dead eyes. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. We, we yeah, have a full podcast on Bauda Mishram. It's yeah. out already, probably. <laughs> I hope. So, <laughs> sort of on a semi, no, it's not really a reread, but like going through that chapter again, I noticed, oh, okay. It was foreshadowed there already, so cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was just one fun tidbit I noticed. Yeah, uh, that that is very interesting. That Badamishram's binding hurt Allspren, right? Mm-hmm. 
we I was chatting with David and Evgeny the other day. I feel like the reason the sibling can't hear Honor's tone anymore has to do with Honor's death. And they were <laughs> they were thinking they 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 agreed and they were saying, hmm, so but the binding of Badamishram hurt the sibling. But if Honor didn't die, the sibling probably could have recovered and still heard Honor's tone and then eventually create Tower Light or something? Maybe? But it's, man, there's so much going on with, like, Honor's death. We don't know anything about Honor's death. Yeah. Really. Like, I would love to get some freaking answers on that. You know? Um, hmm. But, like, in that sense, it makes sense that the sibling cannot hear Honor's tone, but can hear t- yeah. Cultivation's tone. Because one of it those is, is not alive anymore. <laughs> um. But also, um, if if they go with the thing that honors in the humans. Ah, um, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then and the humans don't have rhythms. Then how mm. is the sibling going True. to hear the tones of honor? Mm. Until Navani starts so the learning the rhythms. Yeah. And that is sick. That, I that's, think that that probably has something to do with it. That's that's what's called theme connecting with the plot. I like <laughs> oh, it. Definitely. I like that. That's <laughs> good. That's solid. So do you want to talk about part four? Yes. Yep. I think with part four, we got to just talk about the dog and the dragon. Like, come on. Yes. We, we got we to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Love this. This is great. Uh, I don't know why Kaladin... Vision is on Braze, though. <laughs> what the hell's going on with that? I have no idea. <laughs> what? No freaking idea, yeah. <laughs> no idea. Like, how is Hoyt able to just go in there? That's because... a good question. See, the great thing with Hoyd, <laughs> it, I guess, it, I think we were chatting at some point about how, like, is Vasher having weird magical abilities is that like a problem when you're reading the book mm-hmm. that he has magical abilities if you're an, a stormlight only oh, yeah. reader but we totally accept that hoyd has weird magical abilities and we don't know what's <laughs> going on with that so like i feel like it i don't know if you're a stormlight only reader i'm curious what you think but uh, like brandon was saying yeah you know there's, there's always sort of gandalfy figures who mm-hmm. they have weird mm-hmm. magical abilities and you don't know what's up and Vasher's kind of like that but we obviously are just like, yeah, I mean, Hoyt has weird crap. He, he knows a lot. Well, it is established by now that Hoyt is not from Roshar. Sure. So I think that a Stormlight-only reader would know that Hoyt has different abilities from different places. Whereas Vasher or Zahel, um, we don't, I mean, there's hints, obviously, to a Stormlight-only reader that there's something different about him, but it's not as obvious as with Hoyd. Okay, mm-hmm. that's that's fair. But yeah, the yeah. Me- mechanically, no idea why Hoyd uh, enters the fishing. Uh, I guess we don't completely know mechanical how, mechanically how um, Lyft got into the into Daniel's visions. Mm-hmm. Like we know it's has oh, to do with true. Yeah. on the captive realm. Yeah, and probably her connection to because she was only in the visions with uh, Gox, I think. So probably something to do with her connection to him. But Oh right, because when Odium showed yeah. up in part two, that was Dalinar showing Gox uh the mm-hmm. right, yeah, 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 yeah. So I maybe see. like it's just how it having a connection to Kellen because they've talked yeah. a bunch. They, 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 they have talked a bunch. That's that's certainly <laughs> true. Yeah, because three out of the four Hoyd stories is is Calden. Yep. Mm-hmm. Calden but the main character found- confirmed. <laughs> what I thought about is, like why it, wouldn't that like how, that's a vision that is vision that is pr- provided by audium so why would Hoyt willingly go into that and potentially expose himself or like I, I just found it a little weird didn't he put uh, up a bubble around them though yeah like was that like a cadmium bubble or something oh that's a great question. That I mean, that's what I thought when I was reading it. I was like, "Oh, he's using a bubble." Danielle Hoyd's an alamancer. Like that's that's very possible mm-hmm. that, or, or it'd probably be Bendeloy, right? 
or oh yeah that's um, right well the one that makes it yeah slower on the outside <laughs> slower on the outside yeah slower yeah, yeah, on the yeah. outside yeah or maybe it's just it could also just be some sort of copper cloud stuff that just manifests differently in the vision or the pencil visible or something who knows what sort of manipulation hoid can do with allomancy yeah. and all of his other weird magical abilities like mm -hmm. probably a lot of random bs yeah uh, but that's interesting with a bubble yeah that's that's true uh, although that said, maybe a cadmium bubble is exactly what Calden wants. It's like, no, let's <laughs> let's have this vision end a little quicker. I don't want to yeah. experience all that. So I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but like, if you want to like get a conversation in and get out before Odium spots you, you probably want mm -hmm. Pendaloy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I mean, presumably Hoyd just knows how important Calden is in all this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But God, Brace does not sound like a nice place. I don't, I don't know. No. Nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm pretty excited to see Harold flashbacks as they're like between desolations, you know, on mm -hmm. Brace. Like, I would love to see how that works and see like a Harold breaking, you know? Oh, yeah. On Brace. Yeah. Like, that. like <laughs> witnessing that on screen. Oh, man, that's going to be cool. But you know what else is cool? design yes 10 out of 10 <laughs> the best friend oh, I love her. like i love pattern i love sill but design just comes in and i'm like oh my god you're really oh, yeah. great you're the best yeah, she's the perfect metroid yeah i mean come on <laughs> it's true i bonded a literal monster <laughs> <laughs> dogs can't be dragons yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh it's man good, yeah i just it, live for her ruining his story i know i know i'm so excited from now on. 10 out of 10 <laughs> yeah oh, yeah the best it it is a little i don't know it makes me wonder how uh, her relationship would have worked out with uh Eduka. <laughs> way um, less interesting that's yes, for sure <laughs> way less interesting and whether maybe I guess maybe Wit probably has some impact on her behavior as well. Like, yeah, she, sure. acts, she acts around him because he is Wit or Hoyt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. she would probably acted, have acted differently around Eloka, but it's still like interesting because you all have to keep that in uh, back in your mind that she would have been Eloka's friend. And yep. but yeah, she may have loosened up a little bit though. Yeah. <sighs> you know, he was so anxious and paranoid yeah. all the time and she'd been like mm -hmm. why are you so worried <laughs> yeah it's like you were just scared of me like i'm already here what's up like you don't have to worry about yeah. that anymore i do like how hoid's like wow it, it's almost like it's too easy to do illusions so i do it the old way <laughs> with light weaving. it's it's just too easy now it's not fun anymore yeah well he's definitely theatrical so a little bit that he is <laughs> The more the moral of this of the dog and the dragon, uh, it's like ah, oh, you'll be warm again. Yes. And that the story ends. It's like dragons never had it this good anyway. It's like oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. It is. Oh. I really liked when Kaladin was like, "Okay, I get it. This is me." And Hoyt's like, "Let me tell my story." <laughs> <laughs> He's being sassed by both Kaladin and Design. <laughs> <laughs> For as far as the story itself is concerned, of all the Hoyt stories we had so far, that one is or this one is the most suitable for a picture book. I, I yeah. Feel. Oh, like for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's get Isaac friend. Stewart to do this. <laughs> I'm, well, I think before uh, Rhythm of War came out, they're like, oh yeah, uh, there's another Hoyt story that'll be really good for yeah. a picture book, and like, uh, yeah, I you're, you're totally well, yeah. right. It's absolutely true. Uh, and I just want this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that, that, uh, sign me up for that. I'll I'll pre-order that. <laughs> Give me that. Uh, but yeah, we we really don't get a lot of Calvin in this part because he's uh mm. unconscious. <laughs> so there you go. We don't get a lot of either of them in this part. Uh, well, I, I yeah. mean, it, it's funny in part four because we were planning on the last episode, and I was looking, and there's only seven chapters of Adel and Shalon <laughs> in there, mm. but like. We're getting Venley stuff, we're getting Venley flashbacks, we're getting mm -hmm. Kaladin stuff, and we're getting Adel and Shallan stuff. So yeah. there's really not that much space in this part. But in this, 
Navani creates Warlight, and uh, the the rhythm of war. Raboniel instantly mm-hmm. knows that it is called mm-hmm. the rhythm of war, which yep. is very cool. That we did a whole podcast on lights, uh, and we barely delved deep into them, but it, it's such like a big moment that Warlight's created that I feel like narratively that it should be useful for something. Oh, yeah. If it isn't, we get. I guess we get that tower light is already useful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. more light better be as well. And yeah, I can't see what it might be used for yet. But maybe you can just because apparently the fabrials do work with stormlight and tower light. So mm-hmm. you could maybe just use war light. And what I don't did, know. And I'm still not a hundred percent sure how. Many of the Fabrials actually work on Stormlight versus uh, yeah. Tower Light because uh, your theater is not in a great place uh, before uh, it, <laughs> it turns on again, right? So I don't, I don't really know. Well, they they did mm-hmm. bring their own Fabrials, like the warming, yeah, heat Fabrials mm-hmm. and stuff in. Yeah, like maybe they because Voidlet has this probably that it lasts longer in gemstones mm-hmm. and maybe. Um, Void light, uh, war light takes on some of those properties, and I can't think of any unique property that would make stormlight more useful. But maybe because it's war light, you can use it for um, fabrials easier now because stormlight is involved or something like that. So I could see some of that that there's trade offs you make when choosing which type of light you want to use. Yeah, and one one theory that uh, we we came up with is either Janat or Baidamishram being a bond smith uh mm-hmm. sort of thing where uh maybe either of them could potentially create more light or something like the sibling mm-hmm. can create like, tower light or something and like once again a human sort of providing the tone of honor yeah right yes yeah, so yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. i just thought of what about like an alloy of because we know that raisium mm-hmm. conducts stormlight Mm-hmm. Does it conduct yeah. all investiture? Because yeah. I was, yeah, we, I was wondering Steve, if, like, this, these different types of lights would kind of go along with maybe alloys of like rhesium or tenofastium and all those. Other <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it is said that rhesium conducts investiture. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Just investiture. I mean, we see it actually like conduct a spren, even like the the half of the flame spren mm-hmm. that when they. Mm-hmm. Discover the, the right. what's, um, multiplication. So. Oh yeah, that's going to be a huge mm. deal. Then they don't need oh, so yeah. many chols to <laughs> pull yep. things around. Like the force <laughs> multiplication, that is going to be super overpowered mm. in like every way. It's not even the most interesting thing. <laughs> no, no, there's so much science and results that we're like, wow, that probably has a lot of implications that we'll see. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, the well, flying airships will Nibani be a lot is, you know, able to focus on other things yeah <laughs> she could put her mind to use that is certainly true yeah like there, there's there's a lot of stuff going on but it, interestingly the anti-stormlight or the anti-void light doesn't react with racium like it's just conducting mm. it so that's kind mm. of an interesting property right yeah because like they it's just held in the knife and you can just stab them. Mm-hmm. uh which is maybe yeah i mean i i don't know enough physics like do i I guess we don't really know i don't like that i don't know if we can have a direct physics parallel here with uh, the the conducting investor because like i i guess that's that's maybe something happened to the racium it's just not like it's not instant annihilation it's more like radiation um damage or something like that potentially but I'm not sure. I'm know. almost I'm almost wondering if other god metals might have this property too. Hmm. Yeah. Because like I mean, like not directly, but in some sense the shard blades are a god metal, right? Of mm-hmm. uh, honors stuff and I don't know where I'm going with it, but like the spren are kind of moving investiture because they're they're reforming the shape of a thing. Like it's not grabbing external investiture, so I guess it is yeah. different in that sense. That that's a unique racium thing. Just wondering why that is. I don't know. But we do have ed metal or yeah. ammonium, and it also 
that's something. That's something. <laughs> uh, it's it's unclear what uh, that what yeah. that actually does specifically. But may, like, maybe it's in some form that all god metals do it in s to some capacity. Because, but like for ed metal, it works because it's also such a volatile element in general that it can provide the energy to do to then do something. Like it, it can't just contain or conduct, conduct the investiture, but it can also do something with it. Mm. Maybe like I could, mm. but I, I'd definitely not be surprised if there were other metal, I got metals that did investiture conduct -y things. Yeah. We're getting off task uh, yeah. talking about random discoveries, but yeah. <laughs> but I'm I'm looking at our notes and just, I just want to mention the barrier storm around Braze. Yes. Like the hell, uh, does make sense. Does make sense when uh the Stormfather says it's new but old of design. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. I guess the Everstorm would be because yeah. like it, they cut off from the Barrier Storm and they had to bring it over. Like it's crazy. Now just imagine the Everstorm is just a fraction of the yeah. Barrier Storm. So. Yeah. Well, presumably. <laughs> well, I mean. I don't know the mechanics uh, of this, but <laughs> why is there a barrier storm around Braze? Like, that is just doesn't sound like a fun place. Braze, not fun. It's, it's yep. earned its damnation name pretty good. It kind of makes <laughs> me think of, like, those pictures of Venus that we've seen when mm. you're, like, descending and then the, mm -hmm. the obviously it gets destroyed or whatever. But that's what I think of when I think of Braze now. Yeah. True, yeah. yeah, so if you forgot, there's there's a big red storm around Braze in the cognitive realm. Mm -hmm. So and now because you mentioned that, like Venus, it will, how does it manifest in the physical? Does it manifest in the physical mm -hmm. realm in some form? Or is it purely oh, yeah, like a like some kind of atmosphere around Braze? Mm -hmm. or something? Well, there was a lot of lightning in that in that Braze vision. I think, like I I would have to go look again, but. Actually, I'm 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 gonna go look again. Yep. <laughs> bummer that bummer that all of those um, those telescope scientist people died in the yes. explosion. <laughs> <laughs> we could have answered our question. That's true. That is true. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I remember like how in the uh, rhythm of previous I was like, oh, maybe they actually get a look at the plants. And nope, they mm -hmm. died. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Brent is like, nope. You don't get to know about that yet. <laughs> no. Well, there is wind, a lot, a lot of wind. There's I think, a lot of I, wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was a very interesting... Flashes of light burned his skin, blinded him. The light was angry, so... Okay. The worst part was the wind, the wind that hated him. It flayed him, slamming him against the rocks as he tried to find a hiding place to escape it. <laughs> and hate, it whispered, hate, hate, hate. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yep. Uh, each time the wind spoke, it broke something inside Calden. Wow, this is this is rough. Uh, it's the, pretty it's, dark. It's it, it, this book d gets real dark with Calden for yes. sure. Uh, its hatred crushed him. Uh, the wind crashed into him, pressing him against something hard. A rock formation. He was somewhere barren. Uh, only endless windswept rocky crags reminded him of the shattered plains, but far more variation. Lightning flashed, blinding him. He held beside the rock as the wind blew stronger. When he started moving, he could see a bit better. Sometimes it was pure darkness. Sometimes he could see a little, though there was no light source he could locate. Merely a persistent, directionless illumination, like, like another place he couldn't remember. Presumably Shadesmar. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much uh, that is just vision weirdness than actual yeah. weirdness. it's kind of hard to say i thought there was something else that i remembered the only other thing i remember is that like how it was like really shining brightly but yeah I, yeah 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 i can't remember anything about lightning right now yeah but there's yeah, there's i mean there, there's a lot of lightning but mm -hmm. But yeah, so Braze sounds great. Let, let's go there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fun. Destination. Fun for the whole family once you get through the <laughs> barrier storm of Braze. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, we're going to do another podcast about like all this epic storm <laughs> crap because yep. and desolations. Because why is there a giant barrier storm? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. 
uh, in that discussion where Rabonil mentions the barrier storm, they uh-huh. it's when Rabonil gives Navani the white sand. Or I guess oh, it's yep. like at the mm-hmm. point. Right. And, um, for one, I, I mean, just she just casually gives her some white sand because why not? And I find it cool how Rabonil thinks uh, says like, oh, it's from off word, and I'd like to go. Or I've never been able to go. Right. It's yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Yep, they're connected. Did nobody will ever get to go. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> sad. Um, I'm sad. But what I found interesting about that was that Navani also talked about how maybe they'd be able to use the sand as um, a way of measuring investiture because, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Uh, it different amounts of sand or something would get affected. And yeah. I wonder whether that might be a unit of investiture we'll have eventually. And you just but, like, like I don't weigh know, the amount of sand that's charged, mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, yeah that. Mm-hmm. That at least would be a practical way of that would be a pra- this That would be practical. Yeah. And then Navani creates a uh, anti void light through our uh, intention and An accident. Yep. Well, I mean, sort of. Uh, I mean, that's what she was going for. But <laughs> I loved Raboniel uh, using the anti void light to kill her own daughter. Like, that was a great scene. Fabulous. <laughs> that was Rabonio's a great. huge turning yeah. point, in my opinion, on like their relationship. Like Navani sees that, and I feel like that changed something about how Navani is thinking of Raboniel. Like my baby's free. It's like, oh man, yeah. that's oh. <sighs> yeah. oh man, so good, so yep. so so good. Just another mechanics <laughs> note. Oh sure. It- and it is interesting to me that apparently, like, it's actual physical sound. That's, yes, 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 because um, it has to be in the vacuum the cube. It has to be in the vacuum vacuum cube, yeah. vacuum tube. <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah, I guess that's just something that is the case in the Cosmere. In the Cosmere, that uh, like physical or like waves in air affect electromagnet- electromagnetic waves. Well, sort of. like, the light isn't... When we say light, it, it does have physical stuff to it. it, it mm-hmm. True. Separate yeah, than it just does, the yeah. uh, electromagnetic is, radiation, right? It mm-hmm. gives off certain right. wavelengths. It, it gives of off it. light, right. But, like, yeah. it, it, it is actual sense. stuff. True, stuff. yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Stuff. It's, it's capital S. It's investiture. The gaseous <laughs> investiture. Thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, anyway, you could you can hear us all being confused about that in our yep. lights episode of Shardcast, which is already out for sure. I mean, we're we're probably gonna have a lot to talk about in part five, so why why, why don't we talk about yep. part five? <laughs> Dig in. Oh, man, where to even start with part five other than that it is awesome? It's really cool. I'll start off with something that I didn't like about part five or like the entire book in retrospect, is that <sighs> Lesian. Yeah, what about him? Not a great villain in this book. Yeah. But he's a he's a one book villain, and yeah, he somebody just, just annoyed me because like okay, okay, Lesian is back, and I, I we know that Kaladin will defeat him eventually, and it's just a little annoying to me that yeah. okay, constantly coming back. It's it's almost like it was fun to me because Brandon talked about the like the Skeletor syndrome or whatever mm-hmm. and that the yeah. uh, uh, villain just constantly comes back and just has more ridiculous plans or whatever and I s- felt that a little with Lesian so mm-hmm. yeah if I'm he survived he would be really tedious so I'm glad he's yeah. dead uh, yeah. and yes. dead dead <laughs> and he can yes. be killed but oh man the the fight with the pursuer what was pretty cool in part five. Oh, it was like, yeah. that, that was great. The way he he killed him in the end, um, pretty well, great. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, where he goes completely like <laughs> just just like I I don't even think I want to describe it because we'll get demonetized. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Calvin just, just goes, goes brutal. Berserk. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yep. <laughs> but but Teft Teft dies. Oh. And Fendorana mm. dies. And Fendorana. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was rough. But an interesting yeah. um, way when we see the white sand being mm-hmm. used for Moash to or Vire to. I did want to see that used that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I know it was not a good way to see it, but it was an interesting mechanic and there. Teft was so close to swearing his fourth, fourth ideal. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> yep. no, it's just, just yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Not a great dude. <laughs> Teft's death was rough. Uh, there, there's an interesting line, though, right before Teft's death that I want to talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. which is very interesting and i don't know how interesting other people would find it let me <laughs> let me just find it it's a chapter right before teft dies uh and and it goes like this teft is comparing the knife to uh like he summons senderana kind of as a knife uh which probably means he's very close to fourth ideal right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh and Moash's weapon, the Assassin's Honor Blade, the one that killed Gavilar, it looked wicked in Moash's hands, shorter than most blades, but in a life deliberate way, this wasn't a weapon for slaying great monsters of stone. It was a we weapon for killing men. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> which, it, which seems to me, like, because the Honor Blades were designed by Honor. Just like yep. yeah. honor, straight up. So th that almost indicates to me that they that the heralds needed to kill some human void bringers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and you don't need to kill giant thunder class because maybe mm -hmm. like it didn't quite exist at the time. And we know, hmm. but I guess the heralds were not as involved in the fighting later on. But we know that there were humans on the on Odium side in some desolations. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. I guess I'm more just like thinking about the switching. That like, why would Honor yeah. design a weapon not for Thunderclass? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Thunderclass didn't exist, and maybe there was still a big portion of humans that yeah, exactly, were yeah. getting power from Odium. That's fine. true. I felt I find that line very interesting. That's personally, unver yeah, that it is. No I took it when I first read it. I took it as like just in Tef's viewpoint. This is how he was interpreting what it looked like. But that's an interesting that you think that it was actually designed mm -hmm. specifically yeah. for with how killing it's worded, it, people, humans. How it's worded, yeah, it sounds really deliberate. That yeah, mm -hmm. right. There is something to it. So well, be, because sharp yeah. blades are totally impractical inside buildings, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're 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 enormous. They they do not work very well in inside structures. Uh, it's they're they're giant weapons. They're super long to mm -hmm. slice up giant <laughs> thunderclass, right? Uh, but this is specifically not that. And honor blades can't change shape, as far as we know. Uh, maybe they could, mm -hmm. but it, it's. I just find that very interesting. Mm. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, Teft's death. That 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 was tears, especially because like Teft is like coming to terms with himself and yes. it's just oh, it's it's rough. That is a rough death. And uh it's rough for Calden too, so that that that's nice. Um It is. <sighs> Got that scene. I mean it did kind of push him over I I mean push him over the edge but it pushed him over because his eyes changed color and yeah. he went after Leslie yes. ruthlessly and yeah and only after he jumps after his father is when he kind of comes back to his senses so yeah it definitely did at first what um, Moash wanted it to right because Moash is saying either uh yeah just leave him but mm -hmm. the the hopes to either have him just like kill himself, I guess, yeah. or uh, go to Odium's side. Yep. Great. Yep. You're, by the way, I do and not think there's a Moash redemption arc after this no. book. Yeah. If there is one, I'm going to be so furious with Brandon. Yeah, like I, he's so I, far beyond redemption. It, I agree. No he's chance. So cowardly and weaselly. Yes. And, ugh, oh, he's great. Awful. Oh yeah, totally awful. <laughs> Yep. It's great characterization, but no, no redemption. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. People love to hate. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he's real easy to hate in this book, that's for sure. He he really what Moash is doing is he's just drawing our hatred into him, you know? Mm -hmm. He's collecting mm -hmm. all our hatred. Mm -hmm. That's what Odium would have wanted. 
sucking <laughs> in all that hatred. Yeah. There, there's Raboniel's Fabriel trap, which is great. Um, yep. Uh, but it was, it was. I, I'm, I'm emotionally affected that Raboniel actually had to die because. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Raboniel would have actually joined like Leshwi's side in this because Raboniel's pretty in it to make this be the last yeah. desolation. So yeah. probably for the best uh, overall, but uh, I miss yeah. Raboniel. I mean, oh, um, yes, Marvin, right. you made a comment about how Lesian was a one book antagonist, and technically Raboniel is too. Yeah, no, but, but her arc is so much it, more interesting than Lesian. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, the, like Lesian was a one book villain. Uh, meanwhile, um, um, Raboniel was a proper. She was a one book character and got a full yeah. arc and yeah. Yeah. like actually interesting things. So and, yeah. I, I, I'd have loved to see her stay, and I agree with you that maybe she'd like she'd uh, have gone off on her own and maybe tried something not n not uh, not with uh, Odium or with uh, Lashwi, but her own faction sort of, mm -hmm. and where that could have gone. But uh, I guess she's dead. Pot, pot. I think some of that was her madness, where she was so yep. hyper focused on her goal Definitely. and yeah. there was no way she was going to change like divert after thousands of years like yeah yeah exactly and i mean she was one of the nine for a while so i can't yeah. imagine that's particularly good for the fused despite <laughs> what they're like saying but uh, i love the scene where uh Raboniel like reveals that she's still alive and like mm -hmm. isn't dead, and then and then they sing that that song one last time. Oh. It was like <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so good. This There's is a lot probably. Of I'm gonna say that yeah. this is my favorite scene in the book. Ooh, okay, Agreed. yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, that. for Actually, me, like, like yeah, this is the me. one where I was holding my book, my knuckles were white. I was like looking at it, like yeah. <laughs> didn't want to rip my eyes away. <laughs> yeah, but then we we got Calden finally. He he jumps off Yerithiru, uh presumably to die, because that's yep. that's 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 what it does. Mm -hmm. And it's we haven't talked about Dalinar. That'll, that'll be next time, I think. But. Uh, mm -hmm. Dalinar, like forging that bond, and then this this scene with Tien. Oh, yes. this is a lot. That was good. That was really good because, mm -hmm. as I struggle with depression, but that just look. You don't have to be perfect for everyone. It's like, hey, you're mm -hmm. good enough for you're good enough for me. It's like, oh, that was great. Yeah, like, like I said in the like first episode, um, I we all had seen it coming that he would swear his fourth ideal. Yeah. But again, the way Brent delivered here and it, Tian is the perfect sort of messenger for Kaladin to you yeah. don't or you can't protect everyone. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. And Absolutely. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. And oh man. That that that, see that's probably my my favorite. Just that 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 Tien vision. Yep. That's that's probably that my absolute favorite. Really high up there, yeah. Yeah, like I loved all the Navani stuff. It's just like the that just like really speaks to me with uh, my mental mm -hmm. health stuff. And Calvin mm -hmm. finally, actually, his depression. Now I can see myself in that. Whereas like before, mm -hmm. that wasn't really. Mm -hmm. He didn't really to me, so that that's nice. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Totally awful for him to suffer through, but it like yep. that was that was so great to see that that Tian scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gave him his closure to you know seeing things from Tian's perspective and yeah. and understanding and yeah, it was a really really good way because I knew I kind of predicted that he was going to swear his next yeah. oath and so this was the best handling that i could have ever hoped for oh yeah for how it was going to happen because yeah. if it had yeah. happened in oath bringer when he was like struggling it would have been okay but this was so much more powerful at this moment oh yeah and it 
Oh, so it was a real nice touch that it was Delina who accepted his oath yeah. and not the song father. Yes. So yeah. That was just a cherry on top for me in that scene. He, Calvin wouldn't have been able to say that oath and mean it until now. Like he mm-hmm. just he just literally yep. could not have done that. Yeah. Yep. Right. But also good. Uh the sibling bonding with Navani. Mm-hmm. It's just <sighs> Like when she when she's when Navani just starts singing the like uh, anti rhythm of audio anti anti void light tone yeah that already was great and then like the sibling reacting oh what are you doing it's 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 uh, I'm feeling uh, the heavy weight lifting off of me or something like that so oh. mm-hmm. it hurting more so great yeah that's a nice plus yeah of course yeah definitely uh man but also I. I also like how Relaine, like uh, Relaine and Venley and Leshwi, all that stuff, oh, so good here. Mm-hmm. I must say, I was a little, ju- just a little salty that it wasn't Relaine who became the sibling bonds with at least like before Navani bonded him, uh, uh, them. It, it was like it was still not clear whether it would be Relaine. Afterward, mm-hmm. I was perfectly fine with it because the scene was just that great. But uh, and I'm also gr- glad that Relaine has his friend and it fits him that like he also has an enlightened truth or just uh, like Miss friend. But yeah, I could have done without the sort of misdirection, I guess, that yeah. Relaine might have been the Swan Smith. Yeah, um, I, I definitely know yeah. uh, people who did not like that. Uh, and that's fine. Because, I, yeah, what do you think? I felt yeah. so, I didn't. I'm a little worried about Navani and the sibling. Um, it it didn't stress me out when I was reading it, but it 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 felt like she was bonding him under or him. She was bonding them <laughs> under under duress, almost mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you yeah. have to do this or else, kind of thing. And that mm. that made me a little worried about like the pretenses of of their um, their bond. Yeah. But what I'm hoping is that over time she shows the sibling how people can change or how people can um be more trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean the sibling straight up uh, straight up says that oh you're just doing this because you want to live to which Navani mm-hmm. answers of course don't you? <laughs> like don't you want mm-hmm. to live? <laughs> and yeah, and also it just talking about the scene in general again. Like I re- again really liked how how we mentioned earlier that she thematically sort of picked up on Notum's mo- notion of honor living on in the hearts of men, mm-hmm. and that I feel is what will eventually lead to the sibling seeing okay maybe there's some value to a human being bonded to a human and comes to an understanding with her and. Yeah. yeah, they they don't mm-hmm. start off uh, on a yeah good note necessarily, but um, they can get there. I feel mm-hmm. it, it was definitely a stressful experience for for both mm-hmm. of them. But I I imagine that like even at the end where Navani's talking with Dalnar, when things at the very end, it seems like they're doing okay, uh, Navani mm-hmm. and the sibling. But I, I'm very interested to see how that progresses. But mm-hmm. I feel like if there wasn't uh, a misdirect, then it would just be too obvious that Navani would, in fact, that is uh, bond true. the sibling. But I do really like, and maybe, maybe it wasn't enough, uh, but that Relaine was like barking orders to the fused and, and everyone. Like I, I, that, that part I liked, which is what I was kind of trying to refer to earlier, uh, because... Mm-hmm. And then Leshwi's like, yeah, no, let's let's go. I, I know what's up. Mm-hmm. Yep. But there's it, it is just so awesome to to see the sibling Bondsmith actually understand Fabrials. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> because the sibling presumably never had that because no one presumably the sibling Bondsmith would be the best person to understand all of that but that could like take a lifetime to understand but Navani's mm-hmm. already done that lifetime so far mm-hmm. right basically so it's 
that was really cool. So I really yeah. like yeah. it. And maybe the sibling. I loved how she like, just sort of went, oh, uh, uh, and how the sibling reacted to it. I really loved that because like, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Like, it's just, okay, I guess there's something here that uh, they can work together. It's like when Navani says, oh, and here's the pressure fabric or whatever. And it goes, yes, exactly. So yeah. <laughs> that was really awesome. It It's it's interesting that like Navani can connect with the sibling very, uh, very directly. And she like yeah. was kind of affected disconnecting from the sibling. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing. But I guess like Dalinar can kind of be the storm. So that's not that yeah. unusual for Bondsmiths. But I don't know. It's interesting. Yep. Living shard plate's sweet. Yes. <laughs> Very awesome. <laughs> it is real cool. Really, really, I, really cool. I did not care for another Aiden viewpoint. Um, yeah, should we talk about cool Aiden? The, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool, cool to see the shard plate in action, but I did not, did not need to see it from Aiden's viewpoint. Nope. <laughs> well, what do you think about Aiden, Danielle? I didn't like Aiden's viewpoints being in this book. I thought they were pointless. Although, yep, I, I mean, I guess, I guess it gives another flavor to being able to see everything from, you know, a, a person living in the tower and they can see like this shard plate yeah. just magically appears and stuff. But I just don't feel like they needed to, like we needed a new character to be introduced just for that viewpoint yeah like maybe like some kind of um different type of third person <laughs> I, viewpoint honestly, it would have been, been okay. more powerful with maybe noril like the guy who um is the first patient mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. Kaladin. that would have been more powerful maybe because like we we know him already and uh, i don't know it w would be interesting to see that not only does Kaladin sort of help him uh, with his mental health, but also now saved his life by, mm -hmm. I don't know, casing him in shard play. I can sort of, I, I could see like Aiden might, or Brandon must have put in Aiden for a reason. And mm -hmm. he might come yeah. back later, maybe. I mean, but, presumably in back half, he'll be a radiant mm -hmm. and I'm going to find him equally yeah. as annoying. So maybe, yeah. maybe I, he will be redeemed, but. <laughs> God, I did not like that Aiden interlude. All all the interludes yeah. I thought were very good. Uh lots of people have said it's like, oh, I miss the random interludes. And like that's true. I liked how they were more plot centric, but I did not like the Aiden interlude. Like you can just skip it and mm -hmm. it looks totally fine. You you yep. you can just cut the interlude. Like you could just have Aiden in here, but I, I don't know. Whatever. Yep. I don't like that. <laughs> But hey, in that same chapter, Maulsch goes blind, so that is yep, yep, pretty good. <laughs> that, uh, yep. There's there's a lot to talk about with Moash, uh, with mm. like where he's going, his the gift with Odium. Mm -hmm. It's very weird. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we can go like on and on uh, about specifics, uh, but, but it's well, a long book. It's a long book. <laughs> we, we're definitely not talking about everything that we felt. Uh, and <laughs> Navani and Kellen basically are the most prominent characters in this book. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we definitely so. have... Even more than Benly and Benly's flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true, yeah. though. Because Brandon was saying, ah, oh, yeah, though there's kind of another character that's kind of the main character, and that clearly is Navani, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So... Let, let's let's maybe talk about like the overall that this this whole arc what what'd you guys like like overall thoughts on this stuff like for navani or for kaladin or both uh, whatever you want like the whole tower siege sure thing. yeah uh, any of that what do you think so for the overall like plot line of the tower siege i felt was very well paced I thought it was really, um, especially since it started like right at the beginning of chapter or ch part two. <laughs> chapter two. Um, it, it really like it geared up and then we kind of had a lull where Navani is doing her science and Kaladin is trying to get the nodes and stuff. And that's kind of 
going along and then it just ramps up at the end in part five. So it was a really nice reading experience Mm -hmm. just in general. Yeah, I agreed. I think that both arcs were sort of uh, as character arcs you in after part one, you we could see where they were going. Like yeah. Navani had to deal with her insecurities and uh, yeah. her imposter syndrome and stuff like that. And Kaladin obviously had to had to swear forth ideal and yeah. finally do that journey. But once again, like just the journey, it's journey before destination and the way Brandon pulled it off here and like like I said in the first episode, I was like he constantly delivered here, and I uh, it's the same for this arc to me. Even if those Kaladin fight scenes were a little eh to me, they were still good to uh, great to read, and so I really liked both of their arcs, despite mm-hmm. us knowing where they were going eventually. So that was really, yeah, I guess what I generally like about this book in general that like we could sort of see where things were going, but the way they the way they were going mm-hmm. uh, that's a very I good point for. it's because i in my predictions i knew kaladin was going to swear his fourth and yep. i knew pretty sure navani was going to be the bondsmith and yep. revive the tower and that happened, but the way that it happened was so interesting. And both stories are very different, mm-hmm. even though they're intertwined. Yeah. They both mm-hmm. have their own beats and their own um, motivations and things. So it was, it was really well done. Yeah, like even though we we could guess those things, we couldn't quite guess. Oh yeah, but but your theory is uh, under enemy control, and that that yeah. that that, yeah. that whole traffic is like, oh yeah, where the hell's this going? I have, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, and so like we get the awesome things that we kind of expect, but done in a really cool way. Mm-hmm. I really liked uh, Calden's depression in this. Uh, real as, as I said, really spoke to me. Yeah, like I, I loved that with Calden, but I definitely, if I were to critique anything, it'd probably be like there was a lot of Kaladin fighting, and maybe we didn't quite yeah. need so much of it. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That would yeah. be my major yeah. <laughs> critique as well. <laughs> Something I just know, like I thought about is that also Nevani's plotline basically all takes place in that one um, library room. Right. Like it's mm-hmm. she doesn't go to many places like she no. moves around like one or two floors in the tower and that's it and mm-hmm. it still works very well for me and like it's more of a character journey for, uh, it's a character journey for end of course the science stuff but it's much more introspective i guess in a way yeah. her entire arc and so uh, there isn't a lot of action to her arc and it's still uh, just awesome to read yeah yeah navani like how can you go out of this book without thinking Navani's awesome? Like, come on. I mean, Ian has always loved Navani, but I've never yeah. been like, I really love Navani. But after this book, I'm like, I love Navani. Navani's great. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, and that whole arc, how she gets finally like, no, I am a scientist and I am awesome. And oh, is yeah. finally getting over that. Oh, also, like the the way the, she describes the uh, uh, rhythm of the tower, like how it's um, ah the song uh, the of, science. of science, the song mm-hmm. of science, right? Song oh, of science was... itself, yeah, that is yeah, awesome, uh, really, really, really cool. But Navani definitely a standout person. Uh, Raboniel also just best new character in this. Mm-hmm. I'm so sad that she had that she died mm-hmm. but she kind of did need yeah. to yes and i mean she even in her death she still enabled navani to bond the or gave her time to bond the sibling yeah, because she true. fought against Mars. so yeah right 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 that's yeah. that's true yeah that's yeah i kind of forgot about that but yeah she totally <laughs> did and uh, uh i'm glad lesbian's dead uh, mm-hmm. That was very glad. Finally, <laughs> I, I love that we got a very short Lesian POV, and it's just L's like, "Yeah, no, we're done with you." Oh, yep. perfect. I actually, I mean, I know I, I said a lot of complaints about him, but his little arc was awesome because he comes back and he thinks he's all that and stuff, yeah. and now he's defeated one. It was <laughs> like. So 
so like righteous to finally read that. Yeah, because he's so such a smarmy like that. jerk face, and uh, yes, and then yes. L's and just then, like, nah. I just remember I was pretty upset when and the like the part beginning when it lists a few point characters. It was like it listed Lesian, but no Rebonia. I was like. Re- Lesian gets a viewpoint and Rebonial doesn't what unfair word is this. Yeah. But I guess, okay, okay I, I'm fine with that. Like him dying in his viewpoint is, is I'm okay with that. Yeah, because there, there's no way for us to witness that otherwise. And, yep. yeah. and it and it I think it's important for us to know, nah, screw that guy. Uh, mm. oh yeah. Well deserved. And it's it it also a great introduction to L as well. So uh, yeah. I'm all good with that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't want there to be villains of the week you know so i'm i'm slightly concerned in that respect but i mean obviously we have a good old teravangian out there he's he's definitely you know he's been an antagonist for a long time and now he's very much that so with the next book taking place over 10 days at least 10 days we'd have at least two um Wins of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Sean Reeks five days. Hey, there you go. (sighs) But Ravonial and Nafani are just the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But but also, in in the back of my mind, I'm still thinking, you know, Navani, your discoveries led to Tefs and Fenderana's death. Just saying. They did, yeah. But you can't really put that on her. Like, there's no. I mean, yes and no, right? Like, yeah. I say I, no. I, I <laughs> she could, could never have like... They, like. I could see where they like didn't deal with uh, the fuse or like the invasion in the way that they did now, and Navani didn't uh, reveal the secret to Raboniel and could then have later like worked on anti white light. But yeah, that's a lot of what ifs to me. So I don't know. I mean, I like not. She's not responsible directly for Tef's death, for sure. Like she's not going to be like criminally prosecuted for that. If <laughs> like if that was the case, but uh, I I guess I'm just like thinking. And granted, I don't know the full history super well, but like thinking about how the U.S created nuclear weapons right and this are some of the scientists slightly <laughs> culpable for mm-hmm. creating these ultra powerful death time. weapons like i mean a little bit right like a, a little bit book five will be like the epigraphs will be navani's memoirs and she'll just say Yikes. i am become death destroyer of spring or something like, like i mean <laughs> like this is a very powerful discovery yeah it could have been discovered uh eventually mm-hmm. otherwise right but certainly yeah. there were scientists who were very uncomfortable with what was happening in yeah, creating she, nukes she, and stuff she's not uh innocent in a way, yeah. but she's also not um, yeah, directly responsible. There, there's she's... there's some deep moral questions there, yes. really. Uh, but certainly some some blame is there, for sure. That Especially because presumably a lot more spread and fused are gonna die. Yep. 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 So, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's just... And on that note... <laughs> well, well, I mean, it, it, to be honest, uh, I think it's a useful thing that, that that could be a direction that Navani's character and viewpoints goes, right? Mm-hmm. Where, like, she is mm-hmm. dealing with that issue. Uh, yeah. Additionally, with the issue of, like, what are they going to do with Fabrials? How are they going to make the same technology in a sibling-approved way? If mm-hmm. they're going to do that, I don't, I don't know, presumably, but yeah. I like, those are kind of two big threads that, uh, Navani is going to have to deal kind with the ethics of her scientific discoveries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just the effects yeah. of that. Uh, I, I think that could be very interesting to explore for her. Right. Yeah, right. definitely. Because and... we can't 
go over all the details here, but like that's definitely a great character conflict for a big epic fantasy series oh, yeah. and exploring that idea. Like that sounds great. And like mm-hmm. as a as a like she is a bondsmith now yeah. and they're all about uniting and stuff. So mm. she could be about like uniting the humans with the spren in a way, like yeah. mm-hmm. mending that relationship. So oh, I that- could definitely see that is where she's going. Well, that's certainly true, right? Because uh, the sibling being alive. I mean, the Spren thought yeah. the sibling were dead, <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. right? So that that's a big deal. Not sure how like they're going to get word to the Spren and the kingdoms in ten, for 10 days for that to actually matter. But like long term, I think that matters, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Assuming everything doesn't get blown up. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> 10 days. Any other final thoughts? One final thing, maybe I really liked how Silver's developed as a character. Ooh, like, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's also dealing with uh, mental issues, I guess. And uh, like, she's not like when she puts on a smile for Kaladin, uh, things like that. Like, yeah, she's also struggling with, uh, she's not always happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really liked how when Kaladin was like, that's not like you. And she's like, Oh, sorry. I I'm supposed to be yeah, sharper and right. and happy all the time. Like she's a she's a person, and and I think that that was a nice little interaction between her and Kaladin and Dalinar when she went to, brought her concerns to Dalinar. It, oh yeah, it kind of yeah. shows that these Spren are are people too. Yeah. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. And I really liked that Sills developing as a character because Sills mm-hmm. great and uh mm-hmm. she deserves character arcs and things I think so that yeah. is an excellent excellent thing please give us more Sill viewpoints Bren. I mean she has a chapter icon so yeah. I, I, pr- I I mean <laughs> presumably that will matter uh, just like Teravangian has a chapter icon but he he might be important later on. I, I think know. he might be important. I, I think he might be important. <laughs> oh, one other thing I did really like was the Hasina interlude. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yep, love yep. that. Bec- seeing Liren from a let's say more empathetic viewpoint, <laughs> uh, where <laughs> yeah. Hasina, you know, like understands, still loves, but still thinks Liren's kind of being an idiot about uh, things. Mm-hmm. Ten out of ten, and their sass is always the best. Liren and Hasina. They're just great. What I did not like about this chapter is how Bren gave us the slight hints about Hisina's like background, her like where she comes, her family. Like, mm-hmm. where, like yeah, like, yeah. He, she, she's I can't quite remember, but they're talking also about like Liren meeting her parents and stuff like that. So oh, and that not going well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Like, I wish Bren would just finally clarify that mystery because it can't be that a deal so why not just tell us i guess hey, but uh, uh, marvin you know sometimes brandon just wants to rap oh doesn't want to reveal it when are we yeah. gonna get luther and luthadel oh. never like well, what, what a, <laughs> when's that gonna be relevant maybe maybe brandon will prove us wrong but like the further we get the i'm just like when's when are some of these things yeah. gonna actually matter <laughs> yeah. brandon but i guess maybe i don't know but yeah, yeah it does seem like a mystery for sort of no reason but mm-hmm. i mean i, I do also I, I, think brandon blabs too much so i can't really judge too yeah. much if he doesn't want to actually talk about a minor plot element and in world it sort of makes sense because of course all the characters know where she is from so they wouldn't really talk about it that much right. i guess right. because like they could just talk about oh it didn't go so well when you met your parents or whatever so yeah, yeah, but that does maybe suggest that there will be something with that. That like Brandon is specifically like saying, "Yes, I notice that there is this thing, yeah. and I'm putting <laughs> it in the book in an intentional way." Right? So yeah, that yeah. could definitely True. matter in some way. I don't know how, but <laughs> yep, maybe it's fine. It'll, it'll finally explain the son of Tanabes. <laughs> <laughs> Your son of Tanabes. I mean. I, <laughs> Got ten days. Got ten days Hesina's before Kaladin and Dalinar dies. Like, oh, this. So. said it was it just happened to be named after ten. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, you you yeah. got ten days until uh, Kaladin and Dalinar die, so you gotta wrap it up, Brandon. 
Yep. Don't say <laughs> things like that. No, yeah. You, you, watch the Daniel Green episode where uh, yes. Dan, oh, he, he says, oh, yeah, Calden dies and then still just loses her memories and is wandering around uh, and she's in tons of pain. That sounds great. Let's do that. That's like worse than just Aladdin dies. It's like yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. No, I like it. That that's why it still has a chapter icon. Oh, I like this. This is great. Okay, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, that was our Kaladin and Nafani <laughs> discussion. Yep. Yep. Uh, really, really interesting stuff. You can find us. On 17thshard.com, you can discuss this book with us on our forums, on our Discord. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Patreon. And Patreon. Uh, we, yeah, we have really good channel on our Discord for our Patreon. That's right. <laughs> uh, we will see you all next time for Venley's arc. Yeah, we should Bye-bye. probably do Venley. Yeah. Yep. See you. Bye.